Audrey, it has been a long time since we sat down and, uh, and talked. And that first video did so well. It was so encouraging. And now you're back. You've written this amazing book that we're going to get into. You are Ghana's youngest female pilot now. So, and I think that's so encouraging um, for a lot of people to see because people all, all around the world are looking for inspiration. And you talk a little bit about this in your book, and we'll get to that because there's some really good quotes in there that um, that really encouraged me as I was reading it. But let's just back up in the story, right? So let's talk a little bit about um, your journey uh, to becoming Ghana's youngest pilot. When did you first realize that this is what you wanted to do? Um, I'll say age nine. But then after that time, I was just saying... Yeah, I was just saying it because when I said I wanted to become an athlete, the elderly people will be like, Athlete, how long will you be running or playing soccer for Ghana? I'm like, No, I want to run. And they also didn't understand the dynamics of the profession as an athlete. So it discouraged me. And then I was just telling them something they want to hear, like telling them that makes you this. Yeah. So about age nine, you realize that this is what I wanted to do. Yeah. And then at what age um, did you actually, I guess, go into the process? I don't know how schooling works, but how did that, what, what age did you commit to doing this? And was it like at the SHS level? I mean, how, how does it work? Uh, I would say starting the flight training journey or the journey to become a pilot didn't start from a particular age. I would say um, maybe from age nine and the process started around that time. So my parents, we're still preparing um, like the financial, the flight training funds, just in case I went through flight training. The reason for me not to go through it um, shouldn't be there isn't money. And that nobody should have to stop their dreams because there's no money. So mm -hmm. if I change my mind, the difference of the money was years. And if I didn't, there was money to go through flight school. Wow. And then where did you attend flight school? Um, I went to South Africa, my one aviation academy. Yeah. Okay, so then talk to us a little bit about um, how long was the process, and then when you first went to South Africa, maybe that first day of flight school, what was going through your mind? Uh, the process would again, like from age nine, growing up, preparations for my parents' side, and also finding and uh, research for themselves. Some of the men who be, oh, you have to be wise to. Like you have to be a white tall guy, mm. and all of these three, I wasn't. So yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you have to come from a financially um, stable family, a financial stable family. But I think we are average. But if we have a task to be done, we may not get the money today. But give us some time, we'll we'll have that money food planning as well. Um. First day in flight school would be my parents escorting me to school from Ghana to the place. I know when I'm going through immigration and like, where are you going? And that, that, that. This is me finishing um, senior high school. Uh, I was very timid through the immigration process, but they see the flight school visa in my passport saying I'm going to flight school. So they wanted to hear from me. Then some immigration officers would call, like, we have colleagues to confirm if a, like, this child, like, they say it's in tree, thinking that I don't really understand. She said she's going with flight school. And then it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, she's going. And yeah, it was it was quite strange seeing different people in the same space. And some people had their parents flying already. It was very intimidating. And this is my ancestors' wildest dream. Like, nobody has come close to an aircraft, if I could say. Really? So, yeah. So, in your whole family, you don't, you don't, no, no one in your family uh, has a career as a pilot or anything like that. So, you're the first one in your family. I think my entire generation, up until now, I think so. Wow. Really, because, no, not my father, not his father. Oh, no. So, this, so, so, this is really an incredible and first time experience for not just yourself. And not just the past folks who come before you, but even folks that are looking up to you that have yet to be in your shoes. Now, you say you first went through the process, maybe it was a little bit intimidating because you're looking at other people who may come from uh, lineage pilots or things like that. Um, now, actual flight school, from the time you started until the time a typical person finishes, around how long is it? For an average student, it could take about two years. Uh, it has a, a lot of factors in terms of your health, 
if you're fit to fly and then weather depends on the time you start the flight training for some days you want to fly there is aircraft but then the weather is bad or the weather is great but then there's no aircraft to join training so all of those factors go up and down and sometimes there's no money for training so the, all of these factors also determine how long someone will train some schools it definitely that today by maybe 18 months we are done but then the flight school I went um, through, like all other flights, like many other flight schools, is as and when. Let's say we have 200 uh, missions to complete. The faster you complete the mission, the faster you finish. If you take forever to complete the mission, that's how long it's going to take. And some people never complete the mission as well. Yeah. And so, after, let's say you complete the missions after these uh, several years of training. Is it kind of like a typical university graduation where you get a certificate and now you can go and fly or, or is there some training or apprenticeship that happens after that? Um, I wouldn't say it's the typical um, tertiary education or even secondary education graduation because normally um, people like you may finish your flight training before I do. So they will give you your certificates, not like a group of people. Oh, okay. So right. you finish, maybe I finish. And then, yeah, certificate. I usually went for somebody not testing, like we found the person with dirty water, like that's the transition. Okay. And then, basically, that's it. Your parents are happy. If it's well planned, they fly into the country where you're training. And then they celebrate with you. Wow. Okay. So then, after you finish school, is it that you can immediately, let's say, if you find a job, you can immediately start flying, or do you have to do some additional training after that? Um, so flight training would have about four parts, where it will start with this gun pilot license. You know, like when you have to learn how to drive, you yes. get a driver's license, that one. And then the second one, you get your private pilot license. That one, you can fly your friends, like, oh, Tim, let's go to Cape Coast Castle, then you go fly the game, and that's about it. You don't pay me. Maybe we may contribute for the fuel, but otherwise, you don't pay as a pilot like me there if I'm qualified to. And you only fly during the day and when the weather is great. But where you want to make it a career, passengers don't care whether the weather is bad or like it's nice. They want to get to their destination. So you want to be able to fly at night. So you do something called a night rating. Without this night rating, if you are caught flying um, during night hours, the license could be seized. You could be fined and then you could be put into jail as well. It's a very serious matter. It, it should be. You're flying a plane, so it, it should be very serious. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, you know, that that's great information. And, and, you know, as you talk, you know, of course, there's so many people that are seeing you for the first time who just hearing about your story. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, they've never heard this, you know, and I think it's good for them just to know because, you, you know, there are some people, as you've experienced when you work with so many young people that... They have a dream, but they've never met anyone who has become remotely close to their dream. So even just a simple articulation of how you went through those steps may just move somebody a little bit further in the dream. You know, and so um, as I was as I was looking at your book, um, um, this is your first book you've written. Yeah, I do. Um, the Lady Bird, and I really like the dedic uh, the dedication because it almost sounds poetic i mean I, I'm, I'm a writer i like to write poetry but i'm just reading these first couple pages right to and in your dedication it says to the children who dreams of choosing careers outside of the everyday traditional careers to the children who have been held back or totally inhibited by parents or guarding the teachers or old ideology to the girl who feels intimidated and never enough to achieve her dreams and is constantly battling in her mind and then you finish up by saying you know, this book is dedicated to all those who can't dream at all. I fly for you. What was the inspiration behind this book? First off, to narrate my own stories, because I think this is something I've always wanted to do. And at the point, I'm like, oh, the media has narrated it to me, so it's fine. But sometimes there are, there is, there are glitches inside the story. So I may not always be where to narrate my story, but then the writing will always be there and like it will be a manual for someone to go through. Um, and apart from that being the education, let's say you know how when you wanted to become pilot, there was no book to go get. You cannot really meet a pilot pilot like, oh, how do you do this? And it's so distant. So I wanted this to break that barrier. 
the most important thing is, I mean, I'll tell people about the dream, how to do about it, but the working factor will be finances. I'm not able to just go ask people that, oh, can you pay for the skills flight school? Din, 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 din. So it's like, yeah, that's good. I want, I want to use it to raise funds to train one Ghanaian girl. Because it's crazy how the percentage of female Ghanaians uh, uh, pilots now, and that's a 0 0.04. 0 0.04. So that's less than a half of a percent. And imagine the Ghanaian female representation and the entire black female pilots in the world. And we are 3% in the entire world. So I cannot imagine how much the Ghanaians will, will represent. Like nothing. Representation of female doctors, female doctors is like a high percentage. I may not know it, but of course, if I pick 100 um, doctors, I should get about 60% being female, if not more than. But 100 um, pilots, now nah, it will be so difficult to find them. Wow. So, you know, it's, it's really encouraging because, you know, you're so, um, you're so just kind of relaxed about it, but the truth is you really have been breaking barriers. Obviously it's because of the support that, you know, your ancestors, your parents, your hard work, your dedication, but you really are breaking barriers. And, you know, this book, um, as I was reading through it, um, as I said, the, the dedication of first, at first captured me. And then even as I was reading in chapter five, um, and I'm not, I'm not going to give away everything. That's why you got to get the book, right? <laughs> There's a lot of great information in here, but just another piece that 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 uh, grabbed my attention was you talked about these pitfalls in flight training, and you talked about one of the biggest pitfalls that people can experience is um, fear or anxiety. Um, and just as you were mentioning earlier, just not seeing that representation in itself could be something to discourage you. So, so, so talk a little bit about. Um, you said it's zero point zero four percent. Yeah. What are some of the other big um, things that prohibit young girls from accomplishing this dream of being female pilots? Oh, well, there are lots of, there, there are lots of factors. We will, we will start with representation. You know how we say representation matters. It starts from there. And then now when you're like, oh, maybe I can do this. Now the support to continue and complete or make the dreams a reality becomes a, a standard block. Because of like uh, things like finances as well. So so around how much? Let's say uh, one one person is uh, watching and they just say, you know what, I want to sponsor somebody to go to uh, to go to a pilot school. Right. Around how much would something like that cost? Um, it depends on where you want to do the training. But the most affordable and closest to Ghana would be South Africa, about seventy five thousand dollars. Yeah will get the girl through flight training and then start working as a commercial pilot. Listen, you hear, you never know who's watching. Listen, somebody just want to, may want to send somebody to flight school. It's only $75,000. You never know who's watching. There's millionaires watching. There could be a billionaire watching. It's only $75,000 to help a young girl to do flight school and maybe be, you know, uh, the next upcoming generation of uh, motivational people to transform young people's lives. All right, so we talk about representation can hinder folks. Money can hinder folks. And uh, in this book, you, you, you really do a great job at outlining the specific steps of like, what are the qualifications? You know, how long is this particular area of training and things like that? So I think it's a really great book for um, anyone watching that is really, you know, wanting to hear from, some, from someone as young and motivational and inspirational as yourself. But not only just hearing your story, but also going, uh, you walking us through the process. Because for me, I mean, I'm learning things for the first time myself. Oh, wow. I mean, I've, I've never had an interest in becoming a pilot, but, um, and in fact, anytime I get on a, uh, an airplane anywhere in Ghana, I'm just listening for the pilot and I never hear your name. Like, it's not her. Um, so, all right. So then talk about, I know you've written this book a while ago, but what has been some maybe the responses or feedback from, from the book? Oh, it's been great. And... Uh... The feedback usually, the feedbacks usually come at a point when I'm like, I'm just tired, mm. tired in terms of like, I'm not motivated myself, but then I'm still doing the things that I still do. But without the inner zeal, you know, it would be parents phone in to say, or oh, via email or vision, any of my social medias to say, oh, this was great because they as a parent didn't know. And for a long time, parents or guardians do not know 
enough to also, you know, guide or like mentor their own children or their wards. So they were thankful for the book. And to have a story that is almost tangible and this close to home. I mean, when they hear about it, they just think that it's from a yeah, yeah, yeah. And in as much as I see it as very normal, it's like, oh, you're amazing. Oh, you are like, okay, okay, okay. So can I run away? You know, things like that. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is amazing. Like I told you the first time we met uh, several years ago, I, I never personally said, no, I had a conversation with a pilot. You're like, really? I was like, uh, yeah, I don't just, I mean, I don't just have a, a network full of pilots. Um, and so there was a very, um, even eye-opening experience for me. And I even asked the silly questions about, you know, what happens if the plane is flying? And, and I recently saw, I don't know if you've ever seen a movie by, with Denzel Washington called Flight. Say that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I just saw it again and... You know, the premise of the movie is basically he did this amazing landing where he like inverted the plane and he, but he went, to, uh, well, it's a spoiler alert, he went to jail because he was drunk flying the plane. But but it showed that basically he did it so well. Anyway, he confessed to being an alcoholic. Anyway, so um, you outside of flying airplanes, outside of, uh, you know, writing books in your spare time, as if your time is not already taken up. You also do a lot of volunteer work with young girls as well as young boys. Talk to us a little bit more about that, that work that you do. Um, that would be reaching out. Um, you know how people want to also hear more from you? It will be going to basic schools where you can meet a group of people and talk to them at once, like individual, individual, individual. It's talking about the journey. And inspiring them as to who they could be in the future. You don't have to be a pilot. In as much as if you add up to the population or the percentage of being a pilot, that it will make me happy. But if you choose to do whatever and go for it, yeah, that will be great. So, so you do, so you do like uh, speaking and things like that at different schools around Ghana. Um, okay. And you, you do a lot of work with young girls as well. I think, if I remember correctly. You either have or you work very closely with like a uh, academy, like a, a pilot academy or something oh, yeah. like that. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? That would be, I, I have a registered company called the Lady Bed Swats in Aviation. Uh, it, it's an aviation consultant's company registered in Ghana, where if you want to go through flight school, this is me coaching you to go through it. If you want uh, me to know like your students in school or in church, I mean, I could show up and do it if my work schedule permits. And then, uh, yeah, this, the major one would be soliciting for funds for people to go through flight school. Because I see that it's quite common for people to get sponsorship in the US, for example, because of part of this women in aviation international. It's like, oh, you have to be this age. You have the standing block will be your citizen, like your citizenship. And then it's like most of Africans are that. So yeah. it's like, oh, I want something to be in Ghana. So that's like, yeah. what's the most difficult aspect about work? Uh, I'd say waking up. Some days we wake up so early. The sleeping part thing, today I had to wake up at around 3 30 to be at work by 5. And that was crazy. I, so that was really difficult. So I'm like, oh, I have to work. I have to do this. I have to do that. So like, you conserve your energy throughout the day. Wow. Yeah, and sometimes I just want to call and say, uh, yeah, it'll be too late to inconvenience a call me. Wow. Yeah. Now, what's the most rewarding part about what you do? Aside the money parts, yeah. getting feedback that people are inspired. Uh, yeah, but if... I can do it. Me, I think anybody also can do it. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little about that money part. Let's say I go through flight school. Uh -huh. I go to the school you went to in South Africa. <clears throat> um, I've done all my qualifications. I've done the this, the that, the night, the day, uh -huh. the after night, the after day. I've done I've, everything. <laughs> I've done everything. And then average, right? Uh -huh. Not you personally, but just like the average person starting off. Let's say they're working at a um, an Africa World Airlines or something. I, I don't know. Uh -huh. um, what is a typical starting salary for, um, you know, that in, in, in pilot? I think it will, in general, it will vary from company to company or 
the airline you're working with, if you are little poor or expect, there are a lot of factors. Really? But truly, I think after flight school, in a year to 18 months, 12 to 18 months, like if I've gotten your money out of it. So you've said that flight school is about 75000 Yeah, now. Now. So it would be safe to say that right now, if I go to flight school and I finish everything, within like 18 months, I'd be earning maybe like 70 Yeah, There's factors. Taxes, but yeah. maybe 75, 80, 250, 350. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, um, that that's uh, well, that's good to know because some people have no idea, right? And, and it has nothing to do with what you know where you are in your career, talking about your salary. But I think generally people um, don't know. Now, here's a in, in an interesting question, right? Uh -huh. um, so, and I'm sure people watching this may want to know if they become a pilot in Ghana, am I paid in CDs? Or USD? Um, again, it depends. You may or may not be paid in season. Hey, then let me go and fly outside. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, Audrey, you have such an inspirational story. And again, there's people watching you for the first time. And I want you to talk to that little girl um, who is saying, I have a dream. It may not be a pilot. Right. But I have a dream of doing something that may be impossible never seen anyone in my family do. I don't even know anybody who remotely looks like me or anything like that. What would be your words to that person? I want you to know that person is watching you right now. Talk directly to that young person. Um, mm. I'll talk to this young person as well as talking to a younger version of myself. And I'll say that, huh, really, a lot of people will say different things, but what you think you want to do you should just do it. I mean, if the guidance is to steer you away from danger, then you have to caution yourself. But otherwise, you just have to do what you want to do. If it's this, and like, oh, not now, later, but you want to do it now, then like, you do it now, really. Wow. And I'm, I'm going to end with something from the book. Um, this is a part that really touched me because it talked about some things that you experienced that are very hard for you. I begin to talk about, you know, your father, um, and then you start to speak about where your strength comes from. And then you moved on to talk about your strength comes from God and how you get there from day to day. And then the part that uh, really stuck out to me where you talk, you thanked him for being your hero. And then there were three words that you wrote, yet I rise. Talking about how amidst the adversity had missed the lack of representation, the financial challenges and all of that, you've risen. And I think this book does a great job of really talking about how you've gone from young girl with a dream uh, to now woman uh, with a career and also uh, an opportunity to empower people around the world. So Audrey, thank you so much for your time today. So much, really man. grateful. Hey folks, listen, this book right now is available on Amazon um, if you're outside of Ghana, but if you're in Ghana, where else can we find the book? Mr. Ghana Bookstore, media, um, the media bookstore, also in their bony branches. Wow. So listen, all the information is in the description below. Go get this book. Go support a young lady going to pilot school. And hey, I don't know who's watching, but if you got 75000 reach out to Audrey and uh, tell them I sent you. Send a young person to uh, flight school. Listen, I know you love this content. So as always, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Audrey, thank you so much. And thank you guys so much. I sincerely appreciate it. Until next time. Peace.